Models or drawers overlay the actual loaded content of the website and provide the user the option to, for example, log into his or her account. Changing the content of the loaded website typically requires JavaScript. But did you know that you can also create such overlays with HTML and CSS only? If you knew this already, then you might skip this video. Otherwise, you should have a look. The overall idea behind such overlays, which could be a bottom drawer, as we just saw it in the introduction of this video, or a model that we have right here on academy.com, is always the same. It basically means that if I do something, if I click somewhere, for example, so onto this hamburger icon here on academy.com, then something happens. So here the model gets displayed. And then if I click somewhere else, for example, on this X here, the model is closed again. So it's always action reaction, so to say. And here on this page, this is performed via JavaScript. But as I said, we can do the same thing with HTML and CSS too. To understand this in theory first, we are here on academy.com again in some article that we have on our page. And this article contains internal HTML links meaning links that once clicked navigate us to a different section, a different element on this website. We can find such links up here in this area. And there, for example, we can jump to the section where we learn how to uninstall MySQL on Windows. So as I said, this is a link, an internal link though. So if I click here, I jump down to the corresponding section that we have in this article. Now this obviously doesn't change the actual content of the page, which is required to create a model as we learned, but it kind of is a reaction to an action. So once clicking the link, we jump down on the website. And if we again check what happened when we tried to navigate down to this article, then we see that once we clicked onto this link, this hash uninstalling MySQL Windows text was added to the URL. This is a so-called fragment identifier and this simply means that HTML now knows that we want to navigate to a different element, to a different part on this website because we clicked onto this link. And how does HTML now know to which element we want to navigate to? Well, because this element here has the ID uninstalling MySQL windows. So this means once clicking the link above, we add this so-called fragment identifier to the URL, which tells HTML that we want to jump down to this corresponding element. This is one part of implementing an overlay with HTML and CSS only, but obviously it's just the HTML part. Because for the overlay, we don't want to jump to a different part of the page. We want to display a specific element, the overlay in the end, once we clicked onto a button, for example. Then we could say that after clicking onto this button, this overlay should be displayed upon our content of the website. So this means we first need to implement this logic of the internal link to add the fragment identifier to the URL. And then as a second step, we need to make sure that our CSS styles are applied after this identifier was added and for this we need to use CSS and specifically the so-called CSS target selector. This target selector allows us to apply styles to an element where the ID of this element is equal to the fragment identifier in the URL, excluding the hash. So just the name after the hash must be equal to the ID of that element and then once the fragment identifier is added to the URL, then the styles that we define will be applied. So that's the theory now. As I said, feel free to jump on board here in Code Sandbox and implement this logic now together with me, because now we'll dive into the practical part of this video. I will not dive into the details behind this code here. It's just some basic HTML and CSS logic in the end. We only want to focus on to implementing the overlay, specifically this bottom drawer here. Because the idea now is that if we click this button, this drawer moves up. If we then click on to close a button or a logic that we have to implement still, then the drawer should disappear again. 
For this, we'll get started with the HTML part. And as we learned, what we first need is a so-called internal document link to add this fragment identifier to the URL. And this link has to be added to our button here. This button can be found in the HTML file down here in the modal button class. And there we see that we already have an anchor tag with an empty hyper reference though. So this reference must be added now. And here we now define the name of that fragment identifier, which must be equal to the ID of the element we refer to as a next step. Here it's important to start the link with a hash. This signalizes that this should be an internal document link. And there we could give this a name of display drawer, for example, because this will initialize that drawer displaying logic. Now, we need to add an element where this internal document link should redirect to. And now we could go down to our drawer. Down here, we see that I implemented the drawer already with the class drawer. And now you might think that we can add the ID display drawer right here, because with this, we kind of go down to our drawer. We can do this, of course, but if we try this from a practical perspective, then we see when implementing the logic like this, we jump down to this drawer because it's still an internal document link. This means we navigate to that specific part of the document where this element is located. Whilst this is a great logic for real internal document links, in our case, the fragment identifier, which we, by the way, can I also see up here. So display drawer was added. Well, in our case, this is not what we need. Here, adding the URL should just be a trigger for the actual styling that we want to implement. We don't want to jump down actually. We only want to have the ability to implement our styles now, which help us to move that drawer up. Therefore, an easy fix to avoid this jumping logic here is to take this ID we just created, cut it out, and now, for example, add it directly to the body here, like this. With that, as we display the body already, the jump here is almost non-existent. So if we now remove the display draw here from our URL and now press the button once again, we see that we only have a slight jump down to the body element, which can also be eliminated by just going to the styles CSS file. And there inside our card class here, the card class is the container of the entire content of our page, so to say, we simply add the overflow property with a value of hidden. This will help us in two ways. First, we have these rounded corners here also at the top because the display now doesn't well overflow the actual card container. And as a second thing, if we save this and now delete our identifier once again, if we now click onto this button, you see that the jumping doesn't occur anymore. So adding the ID to the body and then adding overflow hidden to the actual card container here is the solution to get rid of this jumping effect. With this, the internal link is already implemented. What is missing now is the logic to bring the overlay up once we click onto this button, because with overflow hidden now, well, we cannot see the overlay anymore because down here, in the draw class, which contains the actual overlay, we see that the default position is top 600 pixels. So if we would set this to zero pixels, for example, we would see our draw once again, but that's not what we want. This should only take place after we hit that button. And this brings us now to the CSS part of this video where we can add this so-called target selector. We will add the target selector here at the button and for the target selector, we have to apply two concepts now, basically. First, we need to make sure that we can interact with the element that holds the ID of the fragment identifier. In our case, we added this ID to the body. Therefore, we can simply go to body here, so to the body element, and now add a colon and target. This is a target selector. So this means once we select our body element via this so-called identifier, we now want to change the style. But as we don't want to change the style of the body element, but of the actual drawer, so this is the class right here, we now simply add the draw class 
afterwards, simply meaning once the body is selected due to our fragment identifier, we now want to change the style of the drawer class. And to see how this works now, we can simply add the top property once again, which was set to 600 pixels above here, and now set it to zero, for example. If we do this now, you see that our overlay, our bottom drawer appears. Why is this happening? Well, because our display drawer here is added to the URL. If I would remove this now and reload the page, it would be gone. If I click again, it appears. And why is it appearing like this, by the way? So why does it have this nice effect? This just happens due to the transition property that we added to the drawer. So whenever we change the top property here, the transition should take 0 0.5 seconds and we have an ease out. So basically we start fast and end slow. But that's not the core part of this video here. We now actually only have to make sure that we don't have to close the bottom drawer by removing it from the, by removing the fragment identifier from the URL. For this, we can simply add a close button now, which right here again is an anchor tag actually. And this should be maybe named close like this. And there I just add a hash because with this, the hash will be added to the URL if we click onto this link. So now we have hash display drawer. And if we now click close down here, then the drawer disappears because the URL again is cleaned. We only have this hash at the end, which doesn't hurt. So we can now open the bottom drawer and close it. And that's it with this video. This is how you can implement a bottom drawer or any other kind of drawer or model without JavaScript by using HTML and CSS only.